welcome to the Mbs Two Reviews. In this very special episode, we'll start reading fan fiction, and in today's fan fiction title is How Silver Quill Ships with Sapphire, starring the illustrious Silver Quill. You can call me Silver Quibble, and I am Raider of the Lost Snark. And also starring Sapphire Heart Songs. You know this is fan fiction because there'd be no way I'd ever go into um fan fiction shippy territory, especially since I've got a boyfriend. Hi. Uh, you saying I'm not good enough to ship with? Huh? Huh? Silver, I love you, but you're a little old for me. Oh, oh the gauntlet is thrown. And I'll be your writer for today, Norman Sanzo. So anyway, with that strange intro aside, yes, this is an initial review. We are going to review an episode, and in today's episode, we are going to review Stranger Than Fan Fiction. Oh, hey, that was terrible. <laughs> I don't know. You, what we have now is a torrid love triangle between Silver Quill, who fights against age discrimination, Sapphire, who is torn between two fictional attractions, and... <laughs> fictional! <laughs> that... Other guy dun, who may dun, or may dun. not exist. Diet you. <laughs> Di- Diet you? His name is Diet you? Wow. No, his name is Diet Silver Quill. You remember. <laughs> I, yes, the, ma- the manga common. Oh, e. no. But anyway, uh, in this episode, Rainbow Dash attends a Daring Do convention and meets Squibble Pants, who hates Daring Do's latest story as much as she loves them. Oh no! Still a better love story than Twilight. Indeed. So this is season six, episode thirteen. Overall, episode one thirty. Original air air date on original air date on July thirtieth, two thousand sixteen. Written by Josh Heber and Mike Vogel. So yeah, this is a really interesting combo. So yeah, uh, we go for. First impressions. I'm all over the place. I just got back home from a convention about writing fan fiction, so my head's all over the place. So, anywho, Silver, let's start with you, man. Ah, Kubili cr- Pansy. This was just such a fun episode. Uh, Rainbow and Quibble played off each other so great. Uh, the, just the dynamic between the two that they represent polar ends of the spectrum. Fans who are overly critical, fans who are overly protective, and... Uh, Audience members have a chance to sort of put themselves somewhere in the middle. And that, that contrast is important because if it was only Quibble raising issues, uh, it would look a far more mean spirited. Uh, the joke, however, is how much, how right Quibble is most of the time, uh, about Daring Dude's adventures. So he's actually able to counter Dr. Cavaleron and solve the puzzles for Daring Dude. Which in some ways I view as the show uh, saying, yeah, we know you have criticisms and they're they're legit. We're owning it. We're silly and we know it. Oh, God. No, we we got a claim. No, 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 no. Uh, Is that all, Silva? Wiggle, 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 claim, claim. No! Wiggle, 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 claim, claim. High school all over again. Uh, That was a few years for us. Uh, Yeah, fresh in high school. Oh, joy. Nightclubs will never be the same. <laughs> oh, dear. Viva <laughs> nepotism in the music industry. Indeed. Uh, but that, that's about the long and the short of it. It's just fun, and it's an invitation for fans to laugh at themselves. Mm-hmm. So true. And, Seppi, what about you? <clears throat> uh, forgive me, but I wasn't as thrilled with the episode when it came out, because it was like... A little while after BronyCon was over, and I was kind of conned out, even though I've only been to one convention this year. It was still a pretty big convention. But I did overall enjoy this episode. I enjoy Quibble. I saw myself through Quibble. I thought of the social commentary when it came to fans in between, you know, the... Two spectrums, like Silver said. I don't really have much to say on this episode. <laughs> Pat and Oswald, though. Hey. Oh, boy. Before this episode came out, I saw a clip from Conan O'Brien where he would explain, like, um... How do I explain it? Like, how his daughter was getting into My Little Pony like he was when he was in the Star Wars fandom. 
I find it ironic that Patton Oswald, a person who was like trying to explain what was going on in this world of candy-colored, tattooed horse butts, trying to explain that world in his own words without any context. I wonder if that came out, like, before he was offered the job or what? I just find it a little hilarious in that meta sense, and I'm done. <laughs> All right, then. And as for me... This is one of those episodes where it had a lot of hype. It had a lot of hype because, well, first things first, you got Patton Oswalt on voicing a character. And then you have Daring Do back, which is awesome because the last time she was on, we had a really good episode. And we have, well, a slice of life adventure story, which is pretty rare. With all of this combined, we had a really, really good episode. It was really enjoyable. And the way that they told the story with how Quibble Pants here is kind of a negative Nancy when it comes to the later books and how Rainbow Dash is a uh, apologist for the later books, you, you can equate this to how Star Wars is because a lot of people swear by episode 1, 2, 3 saying that it was the best in the series while people like Quibble say that it was horrible. What were they doing? What were they thinking? So you have that dynamic there. And to have them play off each other, it's really awesome. Though we do need to clarify, people don't just swear by the prequels. They, there are also people who swear at the prequels. <laughs> yes, that's also true. Uh, Yay! There's one theory that I really like that was well, kind of not true about uh, who's that horrible character. Ish. Jar Jar? Yeah, Jar Jar, saying that he's a Sith. It would have made everything clearer. Yep. Miss Hartin, you're talking no! about No! No! I don't want to die by Jar Jar Brinks. I'm about to be 19 next week. No! Oh, yeah. When this episode comes out, it will be on the... Crime. No, 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 no. The next week. Oh, It'll... yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. But anywho... Let's hop on to it. So if you guys have not watched this episode yet, please do. Uh, we're going to spoil the episode. We're going to talk about key points in this episode. So if you have not watched it, please pause here, watch it first, and welcome back. Now we're going to start the episode. So <laughs> we're going to start off with talking about scene by scene, since there's, well, it's kind of a linear story to begin with. So yeah. We start off with Daring Do in the caverns, trying to find some lost artifact. And this time, her wings are not damaged. She can fly. Yay! No, but her brain is damaged because she forgets she can fly. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, because D Daring Do and ropes is like Superman and Kryptonite. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Having her be a Pegasus is a bit... Hmm, how do I put this? If you're falling and you can fly, so why are you not flying? Well, maybe it's like a spur of the moment. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know. She somehow forgets that she can fly and then just face plants every time. She's like, damn it. I could have flown over that. Why did I do that? Oh, but this gives rise to a new equestrian nursery rhyme. If you're walking down an ancient hall and you really start to fall, daring do. <laughs> daring do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, quick on the ball. I accept this. Yeah. And as Daring Do jumps off the cavern and onto the other side for safety, she founds the idol that she's looking for. And why did it have to be snakes? Oh, why? And we cut to Rainbow Dash, who is listening to the story that's being told by Twilight. And, well, they have a good deal here. Where read, uh, Twilight reads and she packs. And why does she pack? Does anybody know? Uh, because she's a terrible friend who is asking for entertainment while she gets ready to go to a great convention. Don't we do that every week? I, I don't. But I, no one reads to me while I pack. Oh. Uh, well, no. don't Dr. Wolf reads to us with his channel thingy? He reads no. fan fiction. Well, yeah, he reads fan fiction, but it's not like we're always listening to it whenever we're packing our stuff for cons. We can always start a tradition. No, thanks. I've 
I'm li- I'm listening to the Red Uprising trilogy. I I'm sorry that surpasses any fan fiction in my eyes. Ooh, you know what? We should what all. Listen. I just Ooh. don't read. You read you read those books, then you tell me, boo, son. You read those books. A rump. I just don't read. <laughs> But okay, if you don't like reading, how about this? Why don't we listen to people read to us? You can do that with Audible at audible.com. If you're first... We are not sponsored, Norman. <laughs> Shut up. Aww, but I want to promote the Penny Royal Academy written by Amy Larson. No, no. Unless they're paying you, don't. Aww. Besides, besides we, you use Audible. <laughs> I use the ninja equivalent. Audikill. <laughs> Audio that can find you wherever you are and kill you. <laughs> Oh. That I would buy. <laughs> uh, oh well. So, <laughs> back on track. Uh, the reason why Twilight is reading to Rainbow is, well, obviously she's packing, but the thing is, Rainbow Dash is going to a con and Twilight can't. And the reason she can't is because she has work to do. Mm. Uh, princessy work. Except she's always wanted to go to Griffinstone and now she's like, well, yeah, I gotta go to Griffinstone, but there, there's a convention in town. God, being a princess is hard. Mm-hmm. God. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And Twilight is, well, Twilight's feeling sad. And Rainbow Dash says, oh, come on, Twilight. It's not that bad. I, it probably won't be fun. Like BronyCon, it's gonna be busy. It's gonna be hectic. It's just gonna be terrible. Oh my god, this is so awesome. <laughs> oh boy. Yep. And we, yeah. And meanwhile, Twilight stands in the middle of a destroyed library, <laughs> looking up at King Gudo's statue and saying, You did this. <laughs> uh, I accept that headcanon. Yep. And the, and thus the Pony Griffin War almost began. Oh no. No! Then she met Gabby and like the whole shebang chain. Yep. And we- My husband! <laughs> no! What, King Gudo? No! Me? <laughs> Sad. No! <laughs> a silver quill professes love for sapphire. Silver, sapphire rejects him. Oh, what shall the two cross-struck lovers do? <laughs> cross-struck. <laughs> yeah, we're coming to blows. <laughs> <laughs> I'd date silver if he found the fountain of youth. <laughs> oh, oh, harsh one. If he was younger. Okay, maybe. Oh. Manga, I'm not trying to ruin your relationship or anything. <laughs> <laughs> that said, your lady love is cold blooded. Yep. <laughs> uh, so anyway, we join Rainbow Dash at a convention where she's just having fun. And before we go full into this, let's talk about the convention floor. Let's just talk about the whole thing. I think we can dedicate this segment to that. What do you guys think? We never had projectile booths at our conventions, harumph. <laughs> we never had friggin' ball pit stuff at our conventions, harumph. <laughs> that could lead, could lead to very awkward interactions as they tackle one another, harumph. <laughs> uh, but I do have to say that, um, it's on, it's almost on point with what they have. You have vendors selling their goods. You have promoters trying to sell you stuff that you don't really need. That's every vendor hall in a nutshell. Indeed. And you yeah. meet cosplayers. And this is what I like. They mentioned the word cosplayers. <laughs> yeah, that did make me get it. It's like, wait, did they actually mention cosplay as a thing in Equestria? Yes. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag totally weeb. <laughs> Yep. Uh, but I do enjoy this. I do enjoy this scene. Do we want to get into the uh, A number one talked about thing at the convention? Yes. <laughs> I think I the know. The bot pillow. <laughs> yes. Oh, God. <clears throat> that was another thing. It's like, wait. <laughs> do they seriously have body pillows and one of them involves bondage? No. No! <laughs> Why? I mean, I get that a lot of adults watch this, but for frick's sake, it's a kid show. No. Well, it, this would go over kids' heads. Mm-hmm. That's the beauty of it. Yep. And honestly, if you really think about it as a kid, this would just be another pillow casing with your favorite characters on it. That's about it. And or gay. <laughs> oh, 
Or, and this is very likely, the kid already knows. Yeah. Because, because these kids today, where's the innocence? Yeah. I, I mean, just look at this jaded cre- being with us here now. Oh, true that. All her, all her youth and innocence lost to the time, lost to the ages. Yep. So Poor <laughs> Uh, but I do like what they did with the corn floor. It feels like any convention that I've been to. And with the body pillow things, they do sell it though. Like, um, honestly, with um, brony conventions, the this kind of body pillow will not be available because it's considered to be naughty and adult. So if you really want it, you can just go to the room and buy it. But on the oh, con- I've actually seen that stuff at BronyCon. Wait, they, they display it? Yeah. Really? You can display it? Hmm, okay. Uh, well, I don't really know the policy, but I will say this. At Pacific PonyCon uh, this year, some friends and I were getting dinner. Dude comes into the bar, and he's got a full Rainbow Dash Anthro That's body bad. pillow. And uh, we just like... Oh, God. He puts, it, he puts it up on the table in front of everyone. It's just like, dude... Time at a place, which is not here. At least take it back to the hotel or something. Your car, maybe? <laughs> if well, he can? Th- this was in the hotel bar, so at least he didn't cart it all over the city. <laughs> oh, God. But we, ju- we just thought, why do people do that? And there was actually a very good answer from one of my friends. Oh. Uh, Tyler said... He can do that because no one knows who he is. Uh-huh. He is a fan of the show, but he is the show takes the hit, not his personal standing. Mm. So in a way, though we can see him right in his face, he is anonymous. Yeah. Mm. That is true. Now, if Silver were to do that, that'd be a whole different story. Not that you would, Silver, but you know. How do we know? Is that a challenge? Oh, no. The, se- the simple answer... If you answer, feel like ruining your reputation even further, then be my guest. I have a reputation? I thought it was already ruined. But the short answer is no, I would not... I would not cart a body pillow around town. God, no. I... Unless it was of me, and I could see how many people I could make throw up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and honestly, when you buy a body pillow, honestly, you can just buy the casing without the stuffing... It's not that hard. Oh, yes, That's the stuffing. Oh, my. Oh, my, Norman. How could you? Oh, God. <laughs> uh, but that's besides the point. And let's get into the details where Rainbow Dash is geeking out. And she meets Quibble Pants for the first time. And they geek out about the puzzle room. And they geek out about hats having the right amount of arrow holes in it. And they geek out about pretty much everything until they have to get something to eat at very, very expensive con yep. <laughs> vending places. I don't know. Yeah. Run, run by a pony who apparently hates her job. Yeah, pretty much. She needs to talk. She's surrounded by nerds. And she needs to talk to the Cutie Mark Crusaders. What am I doing with my life? <laughs> <laughs> uh. It's kind of like with Colossal Con when. I would go up to the uh, Kalahari, like, restaurants and whatnot, and there'd be all these cosplayers, and all these waiters are like, what am I doing with my life? (laughs) I'm serving a bunch of nerds. Well, nerds have money, so deal. Yeah. I've met waiters that would be totally cool with it. Oh, yeah. I mean, when a waiter waiter says to you, hey, you can call me food wench, (laughs) and I... I just like, oh, okay, thank you. Uh, food wench. <laughs> what kind of medieval conventions are you attending, Silver? It was, it was a Red Robin. <laughs> it wasn't even, it wasn't even a convention. Oh, wow, alright. <laughs> That's okay. It was more than okay, I thought it was fantastic. <laughs> Alrighty then. Oh yes, Red Robin is. Yes. Mm. Anyways. Yeah, so, well. Quibble Pants and Rainbow Dash. They sit down to have a drink, and well, Rainbow Dash is planning out the floor plans of where to go next, and she wants to go to the newer section of the books. Apparently, this con has segmented sections for new and old part of the books. And Quibble Pen says, no, don't talk to me, those things don't exist. Episodes 1, 2, 3, they don't exist. 
He's no, like, no, no. He likes the earlier stuff, but, you know, he hates the later stuff, Norman. Oh, I'm just well, talking about Star Wars. Technically, technically the, uh, the, the one through three is the newer stuff, which came bef- after episode four, which is the new, old, but it's meant to be the new generation. And, oh no, I've gone cross-eyed. <laughs> yeah, I've gone cross-eyed considering I was, cr- uh, my brain hurts from it's the okay. Star Wars stuff I don't understand. It's okay, it's okay. But, um, no, it's not okay. Silver's going to yell at me again. It's okay. Hey, back in my day, we heard our herd. <laughs> You're worse than Eric from that 70s show, Silver. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sure. You know, you know that, but you don't know Star Wars, huh? 70s were cool. Star Wars came out in the 70s. They had a whole episode of that 70s show devoted <laughs> to Star Wars. <laughs> yes, I remember that episode. Uh, there is no escape. <laughs> Uh, All right. So anywho, I distract. <laughs> sorry. Uh, so anywho, um, Quibble Pants talks. Well, Qu- Quibble Pants and Rainbow argues about the whole thing because Rainbow really enjoys the later book, saying that it's awesome, while Quibble Pants say that it's horrendous. It's written poorly and it's just terrible. What were they thinking? Like, what was Aki really thinking? And Rainbow Dash, knowing the real story behind Daring Do says that all of those things happen for real. And Quibble Pants asks, How would you know? Were you there? And Rainbow keeping a promise, well, can't really divulge the full info. So, trying to prove a point, she goes to the bell hop, sorry, um, she goes to the reception, asking for A.K. Yearling, telling the concierge that she personally knows A.K. Yearling. Tell her that Rainbow Dash wants to speak to her. Hmm. It's like me going to BronyCon asking the concierge to tell that I know M.A. Larson personally. Tell him that Norman Sanzo from the MBS show is coming to meet him. Hmm. Yeah. And then, and then there's the concierge who's like, uh-huh, I've heard that one before. Security. Yeah, get out of my face. Security. <laughs> oh no, and it's true. No. <laughs> uh, Luckily, AK Yearling was right there. Yep. Then Rainbow Dash with her smug look. Oh my gosh, I love that look. <laughs> it was... Like, ha, told you so. Yeah, listen to me now. I'm abused my power. But ain't that true? Come on, like, if something like that happens, won't we all do that? Come on. Of course, that's why I love it so much. <laughs> well, it's all, it's all very true to life. I flash you back to Quibble Pants real fast. Mm-hmm. I mean, the whole point he comes to this con, I mean, he buys passage, books a room, dresses up. I'm assuming that's a, a die job in his main entail. Mm. And he's there just to chew out his favorite author. <laughs> and I, yes, I have seen fan comments. This would happen. Yep. This would yeah. happen a lot. It's, yeah. It's one of the more toxic aspects of a fandom. Ah, so true. Pretty much. Sad, but true. Yep, so true. But oh well. So we join AK Yearling and Rainbow Dash inside her room. Ooh, I got another fanfic re- idea coming up. Fifty Shades of Hay? Yeah. But that's, no! uh, but that's besides the point. Um, Rainbow Dash, uh, sorry, Aki Erling tells Rainbow Dash, is she alone? And Rainbow Dash asks, why are you here? Why, why are you here? Like, what are you doing? And she says that, well, I'm here to hide incognito and kind of solve this awesome puzzle that I have to do to get another treasure, blah, 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 and look out for Caballera. He's out there. He's looking for me. And since uh, A.K. Erling is re- Daring Do, she can dress up as Daring Do and hide in open and get comments about how her cosplay or costume is not right. Fun fact, uh, Hugh Jackman, who played Wolverine, did that for Comic-Con. People who see him say that, oh, you got the looks right, but your height is wrong. <laughs> what? Well, Hugh Jackman is a pretty tall guy, and I believe Wolverine is a wee bit shorter. Oh, God, that's terrible. Yeah, That's life, baby. <laughs> that's life. Yeah, but it was fun to see and fun to hear. Uh, so, yeah, <laughs> looks like we have an adventure on our hands. Although, uh not at first. I mean, at first it's just prowl the grounds. 
and see the actual Dr. Caballeron, who is probably having such an existential crisis right now. <laughs> yeah. I, I spend my life fighting Daring Do and look what I get. <laughs> I wonder what it is. What would happen if people actually decided to try a cosplay as us? Like, if somebody tried to do cosplay as Sapphire or Silver Quill or Toon Crick or somebody. I know somebody cosplayed Lightning Bliss, which was adorable back at BronyCon, <laughs> but I would like to see somebody try a cosplay as me. <laughs> I, I had a person cosplay as me. Ooh. Wait, two, you did? Yes, two people. One in Australia. Anthony C. was kind enough to send me a photo. Oh, cool. Oh, God. And a young lady at uh, Crystal Mountain PonyCon who did a fantastic job. Mm. Ooh. So she decided to go as gender bent you. I am awesome no matter what the chromosome. <laughs> oh, yes. Definitely. That is my ego talking. Yeah. I'd go gay for you. But no. <laughs> go on. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Gosh. What, what what will we tell manga? Oh no! <laughs> Today on all my bronies, Sapphire comes to terms. <laughs> oh my gosh! So, talking about Caballero here, he just asks and wonders, like, my greatest rival, Daring Do, has all of his admirers. What about me? And he has a small booth with only a few cosplayers. Oh, so sad. But... Yeah. And then there's his henchmen who are carrying around <laughs> body pillows of Daring Do. I have to wonder if they actually have a thing for her. Well, why do you think vil- henchmen sign up to work under a villain? It's the prospect that they might get to tie up an adventurer. You know, a little kink on. <laughs> oh my. It's 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 known as a fringe benefit. Yeah. Oh my. <laughs> it, uh, henchmen with benefits. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I'm being very immature this episode. I, I know. love it. <laughs> Me too. Uh, but anywho, uh, as Caballero walks away, trying to find Daring Do in a well, technically, it's a needle in a haystack situation where there's a lot of Daring Do cosplayers. Uh, so. Uh, Rainbow Dash spots Caballero and tries to tail him. And Quibblepants comes in and tails along because he wants to say that how she's wrong and he's right. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. The, the typical fan. There is no agree to disagree in a fandom. Mm-hmm. No, a- no. It's not called, it's not arguing, Silver. It's proving how much you're right. <laughs> that, that is literally the definition of arguing. <laughs> yes. It is. That is me in a nutshell. It's not arguing. It's me trying to prove how much I'm right. <laughs> uh, emphasis, emphasis on the nut. Uh, but did anybody spot the Derpy here? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Derpy was there? Yep. She's she's covering her head, which makes it a little harder, but the girl knows what's popular. <laughs> yep. That or Dr. Hooves is somewhere in the background dealing with a... I don't know, Dalek invasion of Equestria, and oh, she's just covering. Yeah, but this is so cool. She's she's just dressed up as Caballero, and she's besides a person with a nice daring do costume taking photos. Like, that's so cool. <laughs> I love, oh my gosh, during BronyCon, I have fond memories of people taking their picture with me. It was so nice. <laughs> people love me. Yay. <laughs> so... Uh, we continue with our adventure with, well, Rainbow Dash goes to the back door, uh, probably the storage place, I, I don't know what you want to call this, but she thought she saw Kebler go this way and gets caught in, well, some kind of trap in a mailbag kind of deal, and they got whisked away to the forest. Mailbags, my 57th weakness. Oh, no. <laughs> No, I wanted to go back to the convention and then reminisce on more references to Bronicon. No. We'll do that later. I'm surprised there wasn't a fursuit of Daring Do or somebody. Why would they be a fursuit? Technically, they're all... Because reasons! Technically, they're all fursuits. They are ponies. Mm -hmm. And maybe one or two griffins, I forget. Are they? Yeah, one of them had me in a headlock. Oh, you're talking about IRL. All right. Yee! It was, it was a love lock. Headlock made with love. Uh, e. But anywho. Any. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anywho, uh, our two heroes get released and Cabellar starts monologuing about his plan and Quibblepen stops him there and says that, oh, here is where we get the whole plan where the bad guy explains his plan and plot, blah, 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 blah. I'm going home and he gets stopped. <laughs> uh, the... And he thinks that the length where Rainbow Dash tries to prove that he is wrong and she is right is out of this world. And wow, this guy is just too awesome. Well, it, it is funny. It's a classic trope of someone acting under the wrong assumptions, you know, thinking they're in a video game or on a tour. So it's a classic, and but he, he pulls it off well. And the look on Caballero. It's like, I, I would not say it's overly complicated. He actually get, <laughs> that he actually gets defensive about his own evil plans. <laughs> yeah. But that's so cool about this show where the villain, well, he gets defensive. He's just like, oh. And, ooh, we get the elusive Griffin Lock, I think. Griffin Lock? What? Oh, yes. There's a, it's like a padlock, but it's a Griffin, uh, what do they call it? Let's see here. Yep, the Griffin's Lock. Cabalero used that to chain them up, and Rainbow Dash says, Oh no, it's impossible for us to get loose. What should we do? And, well... Quibble just gives the best reaction, just dead face. Yeah, 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 let me slip out of this. <laughs> yeah, Let me slip into something more comfortable. Although, honestly, just the way that the it was laid out, all they had to do was stand up and the chains would just, like, roll off. Yeah, but here's the <laughs> other thing, too. They, uh, Cavalier sends his three goons to take care of them. And what does Quibble Pants here do? Throws a button to some random direction, making some kind of random noise, and all of them go try and figure what's going on. It's got to be Daring Do. She's going to save them. Let's go search out you, Fen. You think, you think one of them would stay behind, but no, they're that idiotic. Yep. Uh, and with that, our heroes escape. Wow. Alright. That law was not hard. Well, that, that's what Quib Quibble Pants would say. Yeah. yeah. So, and you, everything from this point on is really interesting because Beat by beat, whatever Quibblepen says happens. It's like, oh, walking on this rope bridge. Oh, let me guess. If I uh, shift my weight on the wrong position, the wood would break and I will go in. Oh, God, this is really happening. Ah! Yeah, that's basically what kind of happens in the reviewing community. <laughs> oh, my gosh. It's like we can predict every single trope right off the bat without even knowing it until... It's hard to surprise us, is the problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we do get one awesome rear view of Quibble. <laughs> yeah, I think that's Maddie's territory. I'm not going to touch it. <laughs> Talking about Maddie, she won't be able to join us because she got back from a con. No! And yeah, she got a hit call, so get well soon, Maddie. We love you, Maddie, but no, Norman, nobody figured that out. Well, we didn't really say, and try this as Mad Munchkin. Oh, if we had gone through this talking as if Mad Munchkin were here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why, yes, Matt, that's a very good point. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yes, Maddie, I totally agree. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Why, thank you, Maddie. I'd love, a, I'd love the blood of my enemies served in their own skulls. Thank you for asking. <laughs> oh, God. But anywho, let's continue on. So, uh, Road Bridge breaks, Rainbow Dash saves Quibble Pants in a very awesome way, and Quibble Pants here is freaked out, yet excited and enjoys. And what happens here is that he nerds out, he geeks out, says that, oh my god, I almost died, and you saved me, and oh, we were flying, oh, oh my god, it was just awesome. We were almost killed. Yeah, and one scene here says a lot, like... Ah, uh, shipping intensifies. Oh, ship, mm. Shipping always intensifies. But this one image, like this one image, if you go to the wiki, you know what image I'm talking about. I don't want to know. Oh, I'm... I don't want to go to the wiki. It always slows down my computer. Oh, my bad. But anyway, just just an image link for everyone. Oh, they can... Silver, save me. Oh, I can't. I must see th these things. Oh, yes. What? Actually, it looks like Quibble Pants is saying, I need an adult. <laughs> and Rainbow Dash says, <laughs> 
I am an adult. Which, from what we've seen in this episode, no, no, you are not. <laughs> uh, yeah. Silver saves me. There's no saving from this. You just gotta roll with it. <laughs> yeah. You're going off the rails on the crazy train. Yep. Ha! I get that. I was like, yes, for reference. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, anywho, after the whole ordeal is done, they got caught by Caballero. And Caballero thanks them for taking them to the temple that we're, they were trying to find. <laughs> so, yay? Yay, indeed. Well, at which point, Quibble is just full on. Uh, what, what is it? He unleashes the big gator. And of course there's a gator, because why not? Yeah. I, I need to address the trope here where there, there's this trope in media where the oblivious guy is oblivious to the danger that's happening around him. Uh, for example, is the situation where he thinks that he's in a fantasy world and thinks that this is all made up and he calls beat by beat and, well, once the danger is real to him. He lose all power and he lose all sense of logic and be really, really scared. For Quibble here, once he realized that things are real, he doesn't lose all consciousness. He doesn't lose all reasoning and he still keeps his cool and he still is, well, he's lovable Quibble pants. He's lovable, but he's also, <laughs> he's talking smack to his favorite author, which is secretly every fan's dream. Yeah. yeah. For some weird reason, yeah. Mm. Yeah. But here we have we have him saying that, oh, yeah, if we step on the wrong thing, big giant monster's going to come out. Like, oh, like, you don't have the budget for that. You're just actors. Like, alligator comes out. Oh, God. This is real. Let's get out of here. <laughs> and then he gets to meet the real Daring Do and kicks. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, mm. that pose there is like, oh, God, that's so priceless. What? You're real? Your friends with me? <laughs> and Rainbow has yet another smug look. It's like, oh yeah. <laughs> it's the greatest kind of smug look, yeah. oh god. Yeah. Can, can I just address this? Starting from season 6, the animators have done a lot of expressions. And the hoofball episode is one of my favorites because of what Fluttershy does with her face. But this one here is too good. Too good to be true. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, what, yeah, you got that right. What can you say? She just she knows what she likes, and she likes being right. <laughs> yep, yep. Mm-hmm. And well, Quibble Pants has the right idea about let's just get out of here. It's dangerous. We should escape. Daring Do says, "Nah, we need to get the treasure before Caballero just gets it." And we enter the room, the seven side chests, where our heroes need to solve a puzzle and find the right. Door to open said puzzle. It's just complicated puzzle room. Actually, it's it's not the fact that Darren Dude didn't see it. Maybe it is. Maybe it is a sign that she's gotten a little too used to action and not a, and let her wits dull. Uh, yeah, so true. Plus, I've said it before and I've said it again. All the ponies are engaged in battle, but the alicorn is just sitting pretty. <laughs> How typical. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh boy. And with that, they get the box and escape. And, ah, uh, wow, th- this whole scene here, the daring temple escape is just too good. Quibble fans says, go around it, but they here go over it. And the reason why they listen to Quibble fans here is because, well, every decision he made from this point on is the right decision. So, let's follow his direction. And mishearing him say that go around him to go over the alligator is just priceless. It's funny Especially when either way it works. It's funny because Indiana Jones. <laughs> yeah. Mm. And so our heroes escape the temple and Quibble Pants here tries to enact an elaborate plan to escape from Caballero by making a mud puzzle box to distract Caballero and blah, blah, blah. And Daring Do just says, I got something here. Let me deal. Pretty simple. It works. And they escape. Yeah, not every Daring Do plan has to be complicated. Yep. <laughs> but here's my concern. What happened to the dusty cat-like henchman? Because he he's not there while they're being chased. Me he thinks, went off to fight changelings. 
I don't know. I'm starting to worry about that crocodile already is a little full. <laughs> Dusty cat! <laughs> oh, that, oh, that'd be great. Off screen, the, the creature starts convulsing as a, as a chest burster Dusty emerges. <laughs> e. But I hope nothing bad happens. I would happens. love to see that. Oh my gosh. Mm. But anywho, the ring dude tells them, uh, the way back home is that direction. Be safe. I am going to the museum and put this in a safe spot. See you later. So, Quibble Pants and Rainbow Dash walks home and Quibble Pants starts to complain saying that, uh, you're right, but blah, blah, blah. In the end, he understands why Rainbow Dash likes the later books and why he likes the earlier books because the earlier books dealt with more puzzle solving and more mystery while the later books involve a lot of action which Rainbow Dash likes and both things are the same IP but one deals with things another way and one deals with another mm. anybody want to take this from me? Basically he, he acknowledges that the fans like th- the same thing for different reasons which doesn't make either one wrong it just makes them different. And it's a challenge to be mutually respectful. Which uh, I can definitely respect in that regard. Again, I, I wish I could see this put more into practice. The last few months uh, have not shown me the best side of the broniness. Oh? Oh, no. This this has not been the year for for everyone to get along. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Yeah. I can see what you'd be, you know, when going by that. But anywho, so, but they go off, and instead of an end credit theme, we have Quibble Pants quibbling. <laughs> Huzzah! I was surprised at this one. I was listening to that, it's like, wait, is this actually happening? How long is this going to go on? <laughs> yeah. The whole, cr- <laughs> the whole credits, especially since he... He ad libbed the whole thing. Oh, well. And, and here's one thing that you guys need to know. The ad libbing and the character that Quibble is talking about is Rainbow Dash. What do you mm. mean it's Rainbow Dash? Um, Quibble Pants here mentioned that A.K. Erling introduced a new character in one of the later books who was pretty cool and interesting. And um, that character that Quibble's mentioning here is Rainbow Dash because... Rainbow Dash kind of was geeking out for Daring Do at the later part of the series. Remember in season three where they first met? Oh yeah. He's talking about that. And he wrote fan fiction about it. <laughs> and then Daring read the fan fiction for five minutes, slapped him and said that never happened. But then hung on to the book for private time. <laughs> yeah, let me see. The, the, the exact line were, there's a side character. I don't want to kind of name it right now because it's sort of this thing that I already written a lot of fanfics on. Uh, I don't want you to, not that I'm saying that you would steal it, but I'm saying this would totally go along with my whole thing about puzzle solving, except that when, if each puzzle that was solved, um, unlocks a new karate move, things would go the right way. Right? And I mean, it's kind of a yarate myself. I'm sure. Oh god, he, he ad lib all that. And yeah, that side character there is Rainbow Dash. Oh, is it me? Am I not right? I don't know what. Yeah. I'd have to, I'd have to listen in again. I don't doubt it because it is kind of funny. Does anyone recognize Rainbow Dash from the books now? No, I don't think she was on the uh... covers. And based on the upcoming Friends Forever, are people going to recognize Fluttershy in a story? Oh, gosh. At which point, which one gets the more popular body pillow sales? <laughs> oh, God. Uh, we only can know in Season 7 when... Uh, well, first things first. Um, comic canon is not uh, episode canon, but if we do see a body pillow of a long-haired mean pony with pink hair or something that to the equivalent then yes it's letter shy and comic canon is uh, show canon well at, at least a reference and with that we, our review ends and well you can clearly tell that we're just having too much fun oh yeah, oh, yeah definitely Th- this is an invitation for fans especially reviewers and critics to have a good laugh at themselves yep after last week's episode oof mm-hmm. yeah 
Yeah, last week's episode we were dealing with people who were not real reviewers who were kind of reviewing and stuff like uh, but they were most unorthodox <laughs> well, most unorthodox oh harum, harum. <laughs> yeah and this one is just like look at you people you're talking about a show of pastel colored horses and you're taking this way too seriously well i don't know if i actually got that feeling like i say quibble was right most of the time yeah so- so, so I felt like the show was saying, you know what, you guys are right, we're silly about it, but it's still fun, and I agree. And yeah, I just like this episode in general. Like the feel, the tone, everything about it was pretty cool. And well, let's not dilly dally, and let's go to final thoughts. Uh, let's go with Silver. I mentioned in a brief uh, react reaction video to this, there was an episode of a show, Voltron Force where they met a fan of the older style Voltron, who was just a horrible person. Mm. Uh, hostile, confrontational, and there was no counterbalance. So he was a straw man of anyone who dared uh, criticize the show in favor of the old. And it was in such poor taste. And that was in the back of my mind, with Quibble showing how much more this guy is in the spirit of fun. He has Rainbow as the other extreme to play off of. He is an enjoyable character who raises some very good points, but also encourages uh, us fuddy-duddies to uh, laugh, have a good chuckle at ourselves, and eh, just remember we're doing this for fun. And, hey, I'm all I'm on board with that. Fun, fun, fun! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so true. And Seppi? Well, from the sounds of it, that Voltron guy sounds like the Pokemon equivalent of a Gen 1-er. Oh, God. You know what that is, right? Like, well, the the poke so Pokemon Gen One fans. Basically, like they say that Gen One is the only true generation, and any other generation sucks. I didn't even know we traded generations. I just figured this was a baby boomer. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, it's kind of like that when you describe it that way. Anyway, my final thoughts. I enjoyed this episode. I enjoyed sort of reminiscing reminiscing from the recent convention that I was at, even though I was pretty much conned out. And, yeah, it's a fun episode, and I sort of saw a bit of myself through a quibble, and it was nice. It just made me have a good time for being such an adamant fan. I'm not really sure where to go from here. Rocket Man, I'm going to pass it off to Norman or something. I don't know. All right. Yeah. So anyway, um, as for me, I personally like this episode because, well, it does a lot of things that I really enjoy, like the whole storytelling, the whole characteristic, the whole feel and tone. It feels fun. There's a lot of things that episodes like this do happen where the the naysayer is always the bad guy here, and he will get his uh, what you would call this just desserts later on and he'll get his punishments and so on but not in this one this one is pretty cool this one is pretty okay the way that they dealt with it was pretty cool i do like what they did with quibble pants the character and i do like the story and i do like how they were not trying to push things overly what's the word looking for just just push it to a point where we dislike quibble pants. In this episode, we enjoy quibble pants. And yeah, I do agree with you, Silver, about how this reminds you of, oh, people who enjoy the Voltron and whatnot. And as for Stranger Than Fan Fiction, I do like it. It's a watch. I say go watch it, go enjoy it, and just enjoy the action scenes. It's much fun. So anyway, Silver, what's next week's thing going to be? Uh, next week, we're going to modify this podcast. Ah. We're going to review Friends Forever number 29, starring some Mod Pie and the Rarity. Ooh. Cough, cough, it's also my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's, that's, uh, join, us on, join us as we celebrate Safi turning 10 years old. Yay! <laughs> 19 silver, for frick's sake! You say that now. Wait till a few years later where you pretend to be 20. (laughs) Uh, 
at which I'm po- not my mother. I don't pretend to be 32, even though I'm actually 49. You say that now. Join but, but- Please join us as Safi turns 52. <laughs> 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 oh, you can mention fogies. Fro- 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 I shake my stick at you. So anyway. But, but. Uh, we'll catch you guys next week for that review. Anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am the Silver Quill. And I'm Sapphire Heartsong, who's dying on the inside. And we'll guys see you next week. See ya. Adios. Porky! As Sapphire tries to make sense of everything, Silver Quill looks down upon her and says, Are you okay? <laughs> looks down and says, You mad, you mad bra? <laughs> Mad bra yellow?